Welcome to the Raise Up Podcast. I'm Athena. I'm Charlie. And Charlie's here with me, and we're we're so happy that you guys have joined us today for this episode. And we've got some questions, and we've got some questions that um, people are looking for answers on, and so. We've got uh, a list Q&A. that we're going to go Q&A. through. It's going to be a Q&A session today, and we hope you guys enjoy it. And we would love to get more questions. You can go to the website at raiseupmindset.com, submit questions there, and Charlie and I will tackle each one. We'll try. Yes, okay. So um, one of the questions that I have was, um, you know, actually, before we start with the questions, Charlie and I were talking off camera about one of the dynamics of our relationship. And, Alcohol. Um, which, by the way, we are completely sober in our life, um, so alcohol is not a factor. But uh, he was just talking about, we, we just finished up a meeting, and he was, he was giving me some feedback about the seriousness of my tone that I was coming in with. And one of the things that I really appreciate about our relationship is how we bring each other into more of this like regulated harmony. So where there could be something that I'm passionate about and I'm getting a little intense or I'm putting off this intense energy and he's seeing that or feeling that and working to bring it down a little bit more. And so I just wanted to say thank you. You're welcome. So energy is so important. Um, as we try to be in a positive energy force and we try to give positive energy to our employees, we want to be positive. So when we're, I wouldn't say talking down, we're talking towards them. Sometimes it's got to be in a lighter factor than it is. But I mean, things are still serious and we have to do it, but it could be a serious with with bringing the energy up or it could be serious in bringing the energy at a, where it's at or down level. And we want to make sure that they're, um, they're feeling the energy that we're trying to boost them up and we're trying to do a good thing for them. And this happened to be our mechanics that we're talking to yes, and, our, shop and our, team. our shop team. And, um, you know, with a fleet this size and your 120 plus vehicles, um, we always have work orders and things that need to be done. And um, some of their frustrations were the same work orders are getting put in. So they're breaking the same things they're doing the same problems. And, I uh, just had to reassure them that, unfortunately, that we feel the same pain they do, and we have to do a lot of education on get them not to break the same things and have the problems they're doing. How to and, use things properly so yeah, that they don't Yeah, and break. so yes. uh, no fault to them and no fault to our drivers. It's the training and education that we have to put into our, our, our drivers, which goes into our shop team, which goes into our CSAs, about filling out the, the forms correctly. So as we see things that don't get done correctly, we try to rectify them and fix them. And this is one of the things that we're doing. Now that we're out of the heat of our season, which is like a May, June, July, August, September, and we're coming out of September, uh, it's time for us to revamp and redo things and just in a positive matter. And yes, uh, and evaluate what, what what do we need to optimize? What are some of the things that we saw? So it's kind of like a little mini debriefing. But yeah. also it was meant to be encouragement. And it was meant, meant them to give us feedback and stuff that we can do too and just reassure them that this uh, this uh, same cycle is not going to keep happening. So that kind of brings me into one of the relationship questions. Uh, so how... Uh, one of the questions was, how do you handle disagreements or conflicts in business decisions without affecting our personal relationship? And I can tell you that before, we get some water it one. used to be uh, much harder, but I think this is a good example of what we just uh, went through was you have to come to a place where we're not against each other. We're, we're moving towards the same goal. And therefore it's not a personal, like his feedback towards me in my tone or my delivery wasn't to hurt me. It was to get us to this goal of, we both want a positive environment for our team. We want them to feel that energy lifted. We want them to have encouragement and to feel uplifted when they're leaving a meeting or, or having an interaction with us. And so keeping the ability to have that feedback loop open is critical. And I'm not saying that we can do it 100% of the time, all the time, because we all have moods or lows or whatever. But for the most part, like, I think that's part of it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, delicate, it's a delicate balancing act, really it is. Because when you work with your partner, your wife, your husband, your uh, significant other, um, whatever it might be, um, 
you know, it's, it's hard not to bring it home sometimes. It's hard not to bring, because as things happen at work, they call Athena, they call myself, you know, we're interjecting and trying to help and do things on this. So it's hard not to, but it has gotten way better. I mean, holy tamale, it used to be some strag out yelling, scratching match and walkouts and things like that on, on be able to get some air, but it is way better now. And we, we try to do it. We're not coming from a place that we're trying to hurt each other or trying to one up the other person. It's just like, hey. It's not a competition. Yeah, but... hey, it's like, you know, in that meeting, um, like we were just talking about, like there was some very serious talking. You can really see it. And you can see the kind of like, everybody was kind of coming down a little bit. And I'm like, well, hold on. Let's just talk about this in a little way, different way. This is why we're trying to do this and give them the positive factors on it. And none of it was a negative factor. It was just like, hey, this is what we're doing. This is how we're going to do it. And this is what we're going to do it. And it's a lot sometimes for people to take in. And even for ourselves sometimes, um, when we're getting people that are coming at us and saying that this is a problem, this is a problem, this is a problem, we have to really filter that out and say, really, what's the problem? Is it is it our drivers? Is it our mechanics? Is it our detailers? Or is it the system and process that we have right now? So when you filter it all down and you kind of get down to the nitty gritty, it's probably a little bit of us not giving the proper training that we should be giving on how people to get out of the doors communication. or communication. Mm -hmm. So then we relook at this and say, listen guys, this is what we're going to change. And then when it changes from here, hopefully it trickles all the way down to the bottom effect. And I think that's where we're kind of getting at. So again, with your wife or your spouse, we have to have those conversations. Like, yeah, yesterday I was on a kind of a low and I was having a little hard issue and we we're having some kids that were acting a little inappropriate. So we were a little bit like, I was like, Hey, uh, I'm not feeling it today. I'm really feeling like this kind of down because like there's a lot of stuff that's going on in our personal lives that we have some friends that are in the hospital. We have some things that are going on in our personal things <clears throat> and we not try to bring that home to our family. And so it's hard sometimes not to, but you got to realize that it's not their fault that things are going on at work. That's not our kids' fault. There's not, you know, that everybody else there's has no one personal to blame issue. No, it's just life. Yes. So you got to kind of overcome it. You got to take a deep breath. And then when it gets a little too serious or somebody's a little bit too intense, you're like, hey, we just got to be kind about this. We got to be nice. We got to just reset this whole atmosphere and where we're at. And let's get on with the rest of our day. I mean, it, it doesn't have to ruin the whole day. Today, it's, it's 11 o'clock. You know, it yeah. doesn't have to last until 11 o'clock tonight. It can stop now and go forward. And I think that sometimes one of us just has to come out of that and just say, hey, this can go. So right before this, my wife came over and gave me a hug. And she didn't kiss me on the lips because she puts this, like, horrible gloss on there it just sticks like shellac so she gave me a kiss on the cheek so i appreciate that so she was trying to be kind in the gesture and, and reset things so so there you go there's a little tip of reset you know um you made a really important point about you know one of the things that i um i know to be true about you is that you can read energy in rooms and from individuals like really acutely and that's something that I think everybody has the ability to do if you start to focus in and really start to pay attention. But Charlie has really dialed that gift in and uh, I know that's true about him and so I choose to listen to him when he's giving me that feedback because I see how that is something that I can like tap into as a super tool for us. You know, in I didn't really feel that because I think sometimes I was a lot of the negative energy. I was like, you know, it's going to be my way of the highway. And it was there. And it really, in this last six, eight, nine months, I really feel that there is this super energy that's in the room and you can either be part of the injury, you can be part of the down, or you could be just a negative, or you could be a right in the, in the middle there. And, and when you walk into a room, sometimes you can feel the energy level and how it is. When you walk into a room and there's, you know, people are smiling, they're happy. You could feel that energy come in the room. And when you kind of walked into it, like our mechanics were walking in here and you could feel a low energy. Like that was like, they're like, they were happy to see us and talk to us about it. But when they left, you could see the energy level started to come up and like, okay, they could see light at the end of the tunnel. And that's the important part because as leaders or as people in our organization that they're looking up to and they really want some help, it's important for them to realize that there is a there's a pie in the sky, that there's light at the end of the tunnel and where we're at. And that's just not our mechanics, that's our, that's our management team, that's everybody. And so what we're trying to do is just let them know that, listen, we just came out of a six month season of being really super busy and, and here's what we're gonna do to regroup and our October is like our shoulder month and we got plenty of time to October it. So if we have 43 work orders in there, we know 20 of them are gonna be super easy to fix, then we'll just work on the, the easy ones right now, get the low hanging fruit and, and then we'll go on to the next ones and, 
and figure that out. But it, guys, it's super important because you have to have that continuity. And it, even if it's just your business partner and it's not your wife or your spouse or something like that, you guys have to have that teamwork in there because if you don't, it's gonna be really tough. And you know, when you have family members that work with you and family members of family members that work with you, it's it gets a little bit intense sometimes. So we just wanna let them know that this is a good place to work and where we can be at. And then we gotta be solid at night because shit, you know, that's our <laughs> we go to bed to each other with each other. So that's gotta be solid too. So it's gotta be it's gotta be well rounded. Yeah, and I think another part of uh, that piece is knowing when to hold space. And I know that there's moments where you, uh, let me back that up a little bit. What is holding space? It's, it's staying regulated when someone in front of you is like in a low or is um, starting to lose, lose it a little bit, where you, you can be that centered person for them while things are starting to fall or if they feel like the sky is falling but you don't see it that way you can just allow them to be in that moment and not contribute to that negative energy or contribute to making it worse like oh my gosh you're right the sky is falling it's like not feeding into that just allowing them to be in that space yeah, i think that was where i was at last night i was in a little bit of a low you know we have some friends that are sick we have some things that are going on in our life we're getting ready to leave for like six weeks. You know, we're going to be gone, and uh, you know, there's just a lot to do before we leave. And you know, we're on two different houses that we're building, and one house we're building, one we're remodeling. It's a lot going on right mm -hmm. now, and, and we're you know, T minus it's the six, 16th or 17th today, and we're like, you know, we're 13 days from leaving for a while, and uh, we have a lot of business trips coming up. We have some personal stuff coming up. We have a family cruise we're getting ready to go on. So, like I, in my mind, I was thinking to myself, should I really be going to all this stuff? Should I be doing it? And I was, I know that we need to and it's it's uh it's it's imperative for our business and for our relationship to do it but on the other hand and it's been planned for months yeah and well it keeps getting, more kids getting added on to it so well, i figure we're already out of town yeah so and i i agree and we need this because when athena and i are solid everything else is really solid so and then our business is solid and our kids are solid but it's a lot going on right now so yesterday thank you for holding the space for myself because i was in a not lose it mode, but I was in not a... You just were processing. I, I, I wasn't the high energy that I would normally be. I was out of like a, a real here, and then I was just, I was venting off a little bit, and Athena just held the space for me, and then she uh, she curled up to me, and you know, I got some good night's sleep last night, and I feel better today, so I feel like I'm more energized today. So if I'm not showing that huge energy today, I am coming back off of uh, having a little bit of a low yesterday, and I yeah. feel better today. Yeah, and uh, you know, there have been times where holding the space for me was just like, you just got me extra food and you were like extra nice to me that day. You gave me extra compliments or um, you I could- I feed you every day. <laughs> you, you do feed me almost every day. That's another thing that helps too, is that he makes sure that I have food every day. And when we travel, he always packs me food. <laughs> And um, that's it's just one super of the small thoughtful. things I could do. Yes, that's really thoughtful. Because she fills out my applications for me. <laughs> I push paperwork. That's she pushes paper. Trade. I don't like to be a paper pusher. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I would say that those are some some realizations that have just served us in powerful ways: is knowing when to hold space and even what is it. And it's really it's talking about bringing yourself to a, like this higher level of self awareness and caring about what's happening around you and like feeling that real, that real energy or that vibe from the others. Because when you're just focused on your mission, you're not really even paying attention to where you're driving in your car. You're like, this is what I'm doing and your brain is going and- You pass the exit. Yeah, and it like brings you back into You're presence. in LA and you have to spend another hour and a half trying to get back to your exit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we've thing. been there before. <laughs> But you know, it's anticipating your partner's needs too, I think sometimes. Like, um, we just got back from the women's classic. We did the women's classic. Yeah. And I think it was uh, one of the fishermen's and I was, uh, I was, I was helped with transportation. And uh, it was super cold out and I knew my wife would be cold and she was on the boat for four or five hours. So I was trying to think of something warm I could get her. So I was scouring for Thai restaurants or And this isn't soup. an easy order because I don't We're eat dairy. <laughs> I don't eat gluten. And... Um, 
And so he has to like figure it out. Plus, then it has to oh. be like organic vegetables, mm. and and it's so yeah. Like, and I'm we live in Alaska. Foreign, I'm trying to talk to foreign people that English is not their first language, so and, I'm trying and to explain in gluten and, and Sterling. Is that where we were at? We were with Sterling. In so, okay, so it's so like Alaska. middle of like it's low. It's, it's a, a smaller small, town. Yeah, yeah, it's a smaller town. So, but they had some great needs. They had uh, it was semi or S I A M uh, restaurant, and they were very accommodating and. Uh, I wasn't sure to get her chicken or tofu, so I got her two different soups. So I would Which do it. Which both were fine. Yeah, and so um, it, it was funny is that when we got there, I got the bus and I got it like 15 minutes before they got off the boat and it was nice and hot. And she's like, is it hot? That was the first thing she had. I said, yeah, soup, so I just got cold. it. And then the food wasn't even served to anybody else. And she was at the table just chowing in her. I was like, nobody's even able to eat anything. She's like, I'm so hungry. I'm so cold. But, you know, anticipating what your partner needs and sometimes like that, you know, I, I got a, a new Blackstone. I'm a... I love my Blackstone thing, so I've been doing a lot of uh, cooking on the Blackstone for chicken and rice and vegetables and all this other stuff. So I've been trying to go home at nighttime to be able to make sure that we're cooking food for the family and getting things ready because we're trying to eat healthier. And as you guys see, that I'm uh, my 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 goal is to get my uh, my weight under control and to uh, to be healthier. So yeah. we're eating healthier. So we're eating more organic foods and we're eating more healthier. And we're really watching what we do. And so it's a uh, you're. you're your clarityness of, is that a word of clarity? Yeah, clarity. Your clarity, excuse me, um, is way more uh, when you're when you're eating healthy and you feel healthy and you're in yourself. And that's one of the things is you really have to feel good about yourself to feel good about others too. And as I'm in this journey, I feel like I'm, I'm much more helpful and much more insightful in what I'm doing and how I'm saying it and what I'm doing and give out, giving advice and talking to people. I feel like I... I I can just see the answers now. It just yeah. before I was searching for them, but it just like it flows so much more easier. And uh, and I, I do I think a lot of that has to do with the food I'm taking in, the lesser food, probably the the food intake I'm taking in. I mean, the higher quality of food. Yeah, kind of thing too. and the carbs and things like that I'm not taking in as much anymore. So I, you know, when they say that it doesn't really matter what you're eating, that doesn't really compute now because it really does take in like a. Um, I, I do in these hydras, Kono, K-O-N-O, how, how do you say that? Alex's company, yeah. Kono. Kono, Kono, these, um, these uh, hydration Electrolyte packets, packets electric yeah. packets were taken. You know, I started taking his and I ran out and uh, I was in a little panic there and I'm like, holy shit. And so we ordered some and you guys could be a little fast in your delivery, I'm just gonna say. <laughs> you know, like two, a week and a half to wait for your stuff. This stuff should have been like We Amazon. are in Alaska. We're gonna talk know. to him when we go to the next Awaken on what his, uh, his shipping needs, but um, I went over to get some liquid IV just to have some stuff that was going in there. Those things are like 45 to 65 calories per one. I'm like, I'm only in taking in 12 or 1300 calories a day. I'm like, well, this is horrible. I, I, this is a whole meal that after I eat two or three of these, I miss yeah. out on a meal for this. And Alex's is only like what? Five, five calories. calories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we ordered like three huge packets, Alex. So if you're watching this, we got you and we got an auto, auto order now. So I drink two or three of those a day because I was realizing I quit monsters. I quit energy drinks. I quit all these things I was putting bad into my body, which was just dehydrating me. I didn't realize how ashy I was getting, how my feet were peeling. Like I was really having some, um, drying issues that I was drying yeah. dehydrating my body out almost like and now I hydrate and so if you guys see my Stanley cup here um I drink I try to drink 12 to 14 a day of these in Alaska in the cold when I'm outside I'm drinking like 18 of these a day now keep in mind he fills it halfway with ice so I, I feel it uh, the first time halfway with ice and it kind of goes down and I refill but I, I'm, I'm on the average probably getting, you know, in the somewhere in the neighborhood of like 180 ounces of water a day with a little bit of crystal light. And I take three of those packets a day to keep my electrolytes and my salt in there. So when I say all that stuff, this all happens for our decision making and what we're deciding. I'm not drinking those energy drinks now. Um, I, I'm, uh, I take some coffee and I take some zippy bears. Zippy bears have a little caffeine into them because I need a little caffeine in my system. So. Well, and um, I think that's what I recognized years ago was what I was putting in my body affected my productivity. Crazy. I'm not giving up my pasta. I'm not giving up my bread. <laughs> you know, and in my mind, it was like there's no pasta on the planet that's worth brain fog or low energy or um, bloating or 
um, any of that. And so it's just that's just one of the ways that my that how I operate that he operates differently that we kind of like work to like grow each other and balance out. Well, she she's usually above the curve a little faster than I am on this stuff. Like she says, oh, I'm not going to eat this stuff because it just doesn't affect. I'm like, yeah, it doesn't do that. What are you talking about? And then as you don't do it, then you realize really what it affects. So again, that sometimes your partner is a little bit more ahead than you are and you have to kind of listen to that. So I, I try to listen a little bit more. It means I don't give everything up. You know, I haven't given everything up yet. I don't, I, I'm not gotten gluten free. I haven't gotten dairy free, but I can tell you that my intake is way different than yeah. it used to be. And, and it shows like exponentially yeah. in just everything that you do. Like, yeah. um, there, I do notice that there are just so many more intentional things that you do in your life now that you just didn't think about before. Oh, <laughs> I'm sure Holiday and all those places are going broke on me not buying Monsters now and or picking up a hot dog or and even when I was trying to drop weight, I was eating just cheese with some salami in it that these packets because I wasn't wanting to do the bread and stuff like that. But you don't realize what that junk really does to you. And I, and I, and I say that it, it's, uh, it's not because people eat badly. It's just intentional thinking about what your food is and and then when we were going on trips i was really nervous about what you would because the airplanes you know there's usually saying, not a, a lot of awesome gluten-free options well there's so either gluten-free or then there's dairy or there's not uh, or there's dairy and then there's no gluten so you usually don't get a double whammy so I would or I would make like six packets of food for you because yep. I was worried that if we ever got trapped somewhere or something happened that she had enough food. So there'd be avocados. You'd chop or, avocados and season them for me. Yeah, and eggs. Put, like meat roll ups. Well, not even and... eggs anymore. Yeah. So just anything that she could use, hummus, things like that. Because you know, of course, you can't bring something that says eight ounces of hummus, but you can put eight ounces of hummus in another tray. Nobody says anything. So it's like you gotta, gotta get around these these little rules of TSA. But I mean she would have these packs of food and, and, and she'd be eating. I'm like, well, shit, that looks good because my food's going to suck. <laughs> so I started eating her food too. So I realized, well, I better pack a couple more trays just in case I was uh, roll up some turkey in there, a little bit of mayonnaise, but intentionality is where it is. And I think that's where we're trying to be is more intentionality of what we're doing and what we're doing. And like today, I didn't feel like I was really positive for the positive cast, but I'm glad that we're doing it because now that we're into it, you could see that our energy is up and what we're doing. Yeah. So. And, and that's really important because uh, when we're together, I feel like we can bring each other up. And I've actually been in business meetings where I really felt like the energy was low from one person. And after hanging out with Charlie for 30 minutes, he brought that person up to here. And I was just like, wow. It's, it's like the things that, that you just, I notice about you now are just so, I mean, it's just, it's so awesome. So. But, well, so if you want to circle back to some summary on some tips for working with your partner or, or your spouse, uh, I would say that remembering that you guys are hopefully like working towards the same goal if you're growing your business or you're optimizing or you're putting processes in place that you are, you, you both, the end goal is here how this person gets here and how this person gets here might look a little bit differently, but it's like to know that you're all, you're both going in that same direction. Oh, there's a couple of different ways to get the flat top. One's yeah. a harder way, one's an easier way. Which way do you want to go? <laughs> you yes. know, that's yes. how we think Climbing about. the mountain, the face yeah. or the trail, exactly. which one? So yes. You can go either way, as long as you guys end up on the same mountain. Hmm. Yeah, and then I would say another piece is remembering that they're not your enemy, that um, allowing the feedback loop to stay open and remembering that uh, this 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 is not to hurt me it's to like to actually make me better and um, and to like be in that and you have to be comfortable to be able to talk to your partner about that too I mean that's because uh, you put yourself out there it, it might sound like one thing but it's you have to be able to accept it the other way uh, does that make sense so yeah you it, it's not criticism it's 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 constructive it's what we're saying to each other is constructive like hey it's okay but the, here's how it was going and this is what I felt so. and and you don't I mean I remember especially when we were younger this it, it, it built very much like a like I was um, I got this competition vibe constantly and that's younger, probably that was just like a year ago <laughs> yeah well when we were younger it yeah. was like it was way worse. it was way intense and um yeah and that that competition mindset like 
I don't even feel like I'm in competition with other motor carriers in our region. Like I focus on how I'm bringing myself and where I need to be. And honestly, there are days where my 100% was actually 100%, but then the next day, my 100% that I could do that day was like 70% of what yesterday looked like, but it was the best that I was bringing. So it's having some grace in that space too and knowing, hey, um, we've got a really big day tomorrow. And so what does that look like? What do we need to do to support each other? And that's what you do for me in a lot of ways where when you're like, I don't think about food so much because you're always thinking about food for me. And well, so that relieves When you're me. only eating once and a half a day, you know, you want to hit that food bar. It's like, I'm hungry. Like, you know, when I go eat my sushi roll, it's only 350 calories and I eat the same one because I know I can count on that as a good protein yeah. source and whatever else I'm eating. I mean, then I know that you've got to eat too because you haven't eaten yet. So. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate that when you think of yourself, you think of me. And honestly, I, I prefer it that way. I would much rather that he was thinking about himself in this intentional way that led him to, to also include me. Yeah, well, nine times out of 10, I go get her food before mine and then I get put on trips and then I don't get food for another two hours yeah. because I'm worried about getting her soup, it's hot. So, so, so again, when he thinks about himself first in that way of him taking care of himself and doing what he needs to do so that he can show up for the rest of us, that's like the best, like in my mind, that's the best place that you can be to like be there for the rest of us. So there you go, you guys. We answered the question on working with spouse, like what are some of the things that we do? What are some of our thoughts around that? And um, stay tuned for the next time when we go through question and answers. And we'd love to get some questions from you. So go to raiseupmindset.com and uh, submit your question or you can throw something on the YouTube comment line. And for those of you who have started partaking in our Raise Up Response Sheets, we'd love to hear from you. So um, if there's some changes or some other things that you think that those could be helpful or just some other topics, we, um, we, we just wanna hear from you. You know, and the one thing that I've learned is uh, we are watching other people's casts and podcasts and stuff like that and some people have shared it to us and <clears throat> i think the important thing is for you to share ours too if you guys think that somebody else could use it and sometimes just putting it on your own post uh that what we're doing um somebody gets to see it and it's just a small nugget sometimes that'll help somebody get past that point they're at and uh, you know we have lots of friends that i share posts to uh, my close group of friends and i i repost really good ones that i see that are really positive and there's so many positive people out there that are really putting good stuff out. And if you feel like ours is, put ours out there because we want to be able to reach somebody else. The whole idea of us doing this was to reach other people. And uplift them. Yeah, and uplift them and not have them go through some of the struggles that we had to go through. And that yeah. was one of the big things that we talked about with the whole raise up mindset is how can we raise other people up? So if you think that'll help out, just repost it. Yes, please share. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us on the Raise Up podcast. You can find us at raiseupmindset.com. Our socials link there so you can get anything that you need from Instagram, Facebook, our shorts. You can download the podcast straight from the website. If you're listening on another platform, please like, subscribe, share. We're just getting the word out on really the encouragement and um, propelling the entrepreneurial movement in our communities. Thanks again for listening. We've got something special at the end of our episodes now where it's called the Raise Up Response. This is just a sheet that if you wanna dive deeper, it's got questions, it's got takeaways from the podcast, click the link below and you can request it. It'll take you to our website and find it in your inbox. Thanks again, bye-bye.